What's up guys, this is DC7 with uh, part 2 of how to bulk without getting fat. Uh, this is just a few things that I couldn't fit into the first blog that I wanted to cover still. Uh, first thing being the importance of meal timing. Um, I know a lot of the guys say the science says meal timing is irrelevant, it doesn't matter, but I'm telling you guys it really does matter and it is strategically planning your meals and the timing of them is kind of imperative to growing as lean as possible and in the most efficient way and I'm going to explain why so let's just say you have uh, your total carb allotment for the day and it's uh, I don't know just say like 400 grams or something for your bulk phase you guys don't need carbs when your body doesn't demand them for energy so if you want to grow lean, you allocate your carbs around the times when your body actually demands it for strenuous resistance activities. So what that means is, and what I started doing that actually made a huge difference was taking your total carb allotment. Like normally, a lot of guys, they'll take their 400 grams carbs or like whatever you're having in for the day and they'll split it into five or six meals and it'll be even, even split and they'll eat the exact same portion size like six meals throughout the day now what I'm telling you guys to try and I think it'll work really well for you and it's the best way to grow lean I think in the off season a lot of guys do it now or at least a lot of the a lot of guys I know that I've been learning from is take uh, 60 to 70 percent of your total carb intake and place it around your workout so like right when you wake up unless you're training right after you don't need like 100 grams of carbs or something. If you're gonna be hitting the gym, that's a different story, but use your carbs when your body actually demands it. So let's say I had 400 grams carbs, I'd probably take almost 300 of them and spread it out evenly between pre-workout meal, intra-workout meal, and a post-workout meal. And that ensures my body's actually tackling uh, muscle protein breakdown instantly versus having carbs at times when my body doesn't even need to recover like if you're having a rest day you're not even training that day there's like logically you don't need carbs to like fuel your body to like sit on your ass you know what I mean like if you're going to the gym and you're hitting like a heavy ass back day you know your body's gonna be demanding some a lot of energy so therefore you'd have your carb intake would be favored around your workout period. So that kind of brings me to peri-workout nutrition, which is basically the pre-intra and post-workout window. Um, basically what I suggest is having, uh, you know, like for your pre-workout meal, have like a whole food meal with a third of that portion set aside for your peri-workout carbs. So, so you're having 100 grams carbs, you'd have I don't know, it could be like two and a half cups of rice with, you know, like a helping of chicken and maybe like a tablespoon of mac oil on it or something to slow down the absorption of the carbs or the digestion. And that would be like a solid, like pre-workout meal. Intra-workout guys, you want something that's extremely fast digesting. So like, think about when you're training weights and you're out and you're drinking a shake intra workout, you want it to be absorbed, you know, like into your bloodstream as fast as possible to start the recovery process. So, the fastest digesting thing I've found is highly branched chain cyclic de dextrins, and those are probably the best carb source, I'd say, for intra workout. And you'd have a uh, hydrolyzed whey or straight. EAAs, which is essential amino acids, not BCAs, but EAAs, guys. And when you have this during, when you combine the carb source that I just mentioned with the pre-digested pre complete protein or the EAAs, you know, it allows your body to like start tackling the muscle protein synthesis process like right away versus having to wait. Like you want to combat the muscle protein breakdown instantly caused by your training your resistance training and you know like reducing the disparity between your like breakdown process and the recovery process allows you to be
be less sore after your training sessions, thus allowing you to train harder, more frequently. You know, the end result is just like more overall results. Like I get way less sore when I use this stuff, guys. And you know, I also stay leaner because I'm using my carbs when I actually my body actually needs it to get through the training. You know what I mean? Post workout, you know, you go home and you you know you have another like a third of your carbs set aside for your peri workout nutrition window. You have another helping of protein, like that's good enough, guys. Like, there's nothing super complicated about it, but it's just the process of, uh, you know, like, think about it logically. Most guys, they'll go to the gym, and they'll pound it hard, and they'll hit the weight, they break down the muscle, and then they work their way from ground zero, trying to, like, recover, whereas this process in itself is kind of, like, combating the issue before it's even there. Like, it's not an issue, but you know what I mean, like... Instead of breaking down the muscle and then starting recovery, once you've like fully like devastated yourself, you already are supplying your muscles with the nutrients they need to recover during the training window. So in that sense, you're going to actually stay leaner because you're using energy when you need it and you're going to grow more. Um, macros you should be eating. I don't really care about the whole like 1.5 gram per pound body weight thing that is like pushed by everybody on the internet or you know by like a lot of like like experts and like guru people and stuff like guys you need to find what works for you i know some guys they have one gram per pound body weight and it works great for them they have like a stupid amount of carbs and they grow lean they grow good some guys they need like 400 to 500 grams of protein a day to break through plateaus and they have like like close to keto diets in the off season it's crazy but they'll grow from that and it works for them so you know like i could tell you guys like a macro split like 40 40 20 or whatever and say like follow this as a general outline but honestly you guys need to take different approaches to your off season and see what works for you best because you know i could sit here all day telling you what i do or what another guy does but honestly it wasn't until I experimented with a lot of different methods that I found what worked for me best. And, yeah, you guys have to do the same thing. Like, if you have, like, like say, uh, you're having a certain kind of food, and it's recommended, like somebody's recommending you have oats for all your meals because it's clean carb, but you feel like shit and you're super bloated on it during your workouts, like... Pick a different carb, guys. Like, it doesn't make sense to keep something in your diet or your training if it's not working for you individually. So, like, for example, like, I myself can't really have a lot of oats without feeling, like, really bogged down and, like, shitty during my workout. So, but I digest, like, jasmine rice super easily. So, you know, my pre-workout meal and my post-workout meal usually has a lot of jasmine rice in it. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for everyone, but for me individually, if I'm digesting it like a breeze and I'm feeling like awesome on it, I'm getting a good pump on it, then it makes no sense for me to use like yams or something else that makes me feel shitty just because somebody who is knowledgeable is telling me to do so. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, eating clean food sources. Obviously... Even though you should be eating foods that you digest well, it doesn't mean eat a pizza because it makes you feel good or whatever. I more mean pick a food that you digest well. Pick foods you digest well that still, you know, aren't refined, aren't sugar dense, like fall into the general aspect of, uh, you know, like safe foods that are going to fuck you over basically and make you fat. So like, you know, it could be... You know, for carb sources, you can test out, like, yams, rice, quinoa, like, oats, like, all that kind of stuff. You know, and comprise your diet with a variety of those, and whichever ones you feel the best on, then maybe have more of those instead of other ones. But, you know, keep the diet clean. Avoid sugar-dense shit. You don't want to be packing on unnecessary fat. You are what you eat. I guess the saying somewhat true, but, yeah, you know, like... Your diet should overall be clean, guys. Um, doing cardio. I know a lot of you guys think cardio might be counterproductive in the off-season because you're burning calories. You need a caloric surplus to grow. 
you know, I used to have the same mindset, but honestly, guys, first of all, heart health, it's important. Um, you know, I used to not really give a shit about that either. I'd kind of like be like, oh, I'm young, like, I don't need to do my cardio, but, okay, you need to do your cardio to stay healthy. But in addition, it helps your metabolism, guys. It helps you digest better and helps you stay leaner. A lot of guys don't know that. It also strokes your appetite and makes you more hungry. And I have appetite issues like crazy during bulk phases. Like, I just, like, I can barely stomach, like, 3,200 calories of, like, clean food. So, and when I do cardio, I just get, like, stupid hungry after. So, it's kind of necessary for me to keep it in, not only for, like, the heart purposes, but helps my metabolism, too. That brings me to taking measures to keep your appetite up. Um... Obviously, I mentioned cardio already. Another thing is meal portioning. Some guys, they'll, I don't know, they'll have like a thousand calorie meals and somehow for them that works. I'm not saying don't do that, but if you can't get in 4,000 calories a day and that's what you need, then try portioning your meals into smaller amounts. Like for me, I need to have five to six, like, small to medium-sized meals if I even want a chance in hell of getting in the calories I need to grow. Because I just, when I have a huge meal, I just stay full for so long that, like, I need to make the meal smaller so I can digest them easier. It's, like, not as hard on my stomach. Like, I just don't feel, like, really bogged down. I don't know, it's just, like, what it works for me. But it's a really good strategy and kind of is... A big reason behind the whole five to six meal recommendation thing. A lot of guys think it's like the recommendation is more because you're going to grow better off it, which in part is true because if you're pounding like a giant ass meal like twice a day versus five smaller ones, you're going to, what are you going to digest easier? Like, think about it. Um, okay. Oh, digestion. Also, that brings me back to uh, for protein sources or something. Like, if you're having. Like, I drink liquid egg whites, like pasteurized liquid egg whites to get my protein in a lot of the time. And just because I can do it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be best for you too. Like, I really recommend you guys try it if you're having trouble getting your protein intake up to a certain amount that it needs to be. But some guys, they just can't process the shit very well. Like, they'll drink it and they'll just, like, diarrhea it out after. And if that's happening to you guys... Probably not the best option for your protein sources. See, I can get away with it, and I feel great on it, and I, f I digest perfectly. But like for another guy, you might just have to deal with having more meat or more whey or more something because, you know, like if you're if you're like literally shitting liquid, like you're not digesting food properly. It's not getting optimized and used to like actually feed your muscles. Like you're just shitting it out basically think about that okay supplements you know I suggest a really fast digesting carb so for intra workout shake I suggest the highly branched chain cyclodextrin and I will tell you why really quick um, basically it has the fastest gastric emptying time so that means like it doesn't even need to hit the intestine to get absorbed I don't even think it has to hit the intestine to get absorbed into your bloodstream which is like very like not not like rare but i mean like no carb can really do that they take longer to digest if you have something that's like instantly in your system like right when you take it in that's what you want for your intra workout shake because you're getting you're battling the muscle protein breakdown like instantly same thing for the intra workout shake you want a high quality hydro weight or eaa product I'm not saying this is ne like a necessity, guys, but I'm just saying as far as like maximizing your intra workout nutrition, this is what I would do, and this is what I have been doing. Um, I also recommend creatine monohydrate. Obviously, it's like the cheapest thing ever. You take five grams a day indefinitely. It doesn't matter when you take it each day. Just make sure you get your five grams per day, and it works great, and it's cheap as hell, so why not keep it in? Get a decent protein isolate. You know, sometimes you're on the go. You don't have time to, like, pack 8 ounces chicken. So having a good tasting, high-quality isolate that's not amino spiked is definitely something you're going to want to have in your arsenal. 
And this last thing, this is only if you absolutely need it, guys. A weight gainer shake. You know, I used to be a big weight gainer guy when I was younger. But they usually get you fat pretty easily. Like if you're having a thousand calories in a sugar shake, it's not necessarily your best option. It's actually not a very good option at all, to be honest. But sometimes if you just like, like people have busy lives, like I understand. Like you don't have time to pack six meals of chicken or beef a day, maybe. And in that case, if you like absolutely need it and you need to get a gainer to get your calories in, you know, just make sure it's not sugar dense, it's not shitty. Look up reviews, make sure it's not amino spiked because the last thing you want is just take in empty calories that don't even have like nutritional value to them either. You know, usually if I want to have a weight gainer shake, I'll just make my own and it's going to be two scoops isolate, a cup of oats blended into powder. Throw that in the shaker cup. Take a tablespoon of extra virgin olive, extra virgin olive oil, and throw that into. Shake it up. It's tolerable. It's not the best tasting thing. I'll give you that, but you know it serves the same purpose. But the nutritional profile is a thousand times better than anything you're gonna buy in a store. And you know it's gonna cost you less too. Oats are cheap as shit. So is extra virgin olive oil. You'll already have the isolate on hand probably for, you know, like everyone has a protein powder on hand usually, and I've already recommended it as well. But you know, if you want to make your own homemade one, that's an option too. Um, for more in-depth look at the subjects I cover, please check out the blog below. My email is dc7gll at gmail.com.